What's up, San Antonio? What's up, South Texas? This is the Alamo City Sportscast coming at you from San Antonio, Texas, the west side of San Antonio, West Bear County, also represented. We got Joe Garcia producing today's show. It is a big show. It is a special show because we have San Antonio royalty with us today. We're going to have Frank Harris, legendary quarterback of the UTSA Roadrunners, with us today. He's going to be on in about 10 or 15 minutes or so. And the thing about it is this. We want to get to know him. Yeah, we've seen several interviews of Frank Harris, and this is going to be different because I want to get to know the Frank Harris that we don't see. Yeah, that it, doesn't wear the helmet, that doesn't have the UTSA logo. The man, the guy, the dude, the, the, just, the, just the guy. Yeah, yeah, if we were hanging out, having a beer with him, if we were going to have lunch with him, we, I want to know that Frank what Harris. What would the beer talk be like? The bar talk. Yeah, you know? that's exactly yeah. it. Nothing yeah. bad, nothing nothing yeah. crazy. I'm kind of questioning whether or not I'm going to ask him any questions about OJ because I don't know if I want to go to negative town on Jeez. that. But the uh, big news, the breaking news of the day is that OJ Simpson, the NFL <laughs> Hall of Famer, one of the greatest running backs of all time, who was uh, accused of murdering his wife and uh, her friend, uh, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman back in 1994, Found not guilty, but uh, later on became became uh, guilty of a civil trial involving it. Um, that was the trial of the century back in the day. That's what it was, man. We all were following that trial, you know, before all the ones of, of court TV and whatnot. I mean, I remember it's just this made court TV. This made court <laughs> TV. I mean, it was just one of those things where we were all just in a trance about the OJ Simpson they were murder playing trial. This? During my school, when I was at school in high school, the teachers had it on the TV. Dude, the NBA finals were on oh, and the yeah. Bronco chase was on and they cut away from the NBA finals <laughs> for, the Bronco. for the Bronco chase, man. So, I mean, the Rockets won the, the NBA finals that year, but uh, no one cared because we yeah. were all talking about OJ. And the uh, news came out. His uh, family made an announcement that he passed away of cancer and that OJ was surrounded by friends and family at the whole at the time. And, you know, we're going to get into OJ. We're going to talk to Frank Harris of uh, UTSA Roadrunners. Yeah. Talk about the Spurs. They played the JV squad last night. Jeez, dude. I, I saw. Remember the movie Major League? Okay. Who the heck are these guys? I'm taking a look at the box <laughs> score. And I'm like, I don't even recognize four or five of these names. I didn't recognize a couple names myself. I'm not going to lie, dude. I saw somebody come out on the court and I was like. Where the fuck did this dude come from, man? You know, I'm just like, oh yeah, my god, yeah. Sorry for the cursing. We yeah, should go ahead and put a dollar. Yeah, dollar. you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do that because that's one of the things that we're we've gonna been stop. talking about. We're gonna stop cursing around here, and I fall into that trap every once in yeah. a while. Uh, by the way, that means cursing in English and Spanish, Joe. Don't try to slip I'm one right. by me. I'm not. I'm not okay, because I know good. those words. I know I'm those words. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's kind of difficult to talk about OJ Simpson because are we gonna talk about? Like we, you always ask the question: What is the 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 first the first line of your obituary going to be? Yeah, dude, that's tough for him because for him, he's an all time great running back, but he's also one of the most hated people in America the past thirty years. Yeah, and uh, you know that uh, murder happened on June twelfth, nineteen ninety four, of Nicole Brown Sis Simpson and Ron Goldman. I think that OJ kind of assumed that something was going on between the two, and uh, he was accused of killing them not with a gun not with his hands but with a knife yeah and then you have the trial of the century with the Fallon glove and and kato kalen in the back johnny cochran johnny cochran marsha clark these were all big names even uh the kardashians dad was part of this exactly he uh, was a lawyer yeah he was one of the lawyers for oj yeah. simpson so this was before the age of dna Oh, man, because if this murder happened in the year 2024 or even in the year 2004, he would have been convicted in a heartbeat. Oh, no doubt. Dude. But the 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 racial overtones of all this was that you find that even in a open and shut case, it kind of showed that there were police officers there in the LAPD that were shady or who had had a history of shady activities, yeah. shady behavior, and Marsha Clark and Johnny Cochran, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> Infamous Poked scene. holes in all of that and were able to convince the jury that, that this guy was not, you know, guilty, yeah. that he was not guilty by a shadow of a, of a doubt. They poked some holes into it all because they... They put the LAPD on trial. 
They put the uh, uh, Mark Furman on trial. Even the way they collected the evidence, you know, even going mm-hmm. as far as that, the way they were collecting it, they tainted it, they said. Right. Yeah. And this was all so bizarre. And, and the media circus around it all, because, I mean, the guy was in AC Cowling's uh, Bronco, right? Yeah. He was and, driving. And his best friend was best driving. Best friend was driving him, right? Yeah. And he had a gun to his head. And you know what this reminds me of? Yolanda Saldivar. Yeah, it does, dude. I mean, that's exactly what it is. And I think it's obvious that he did it, right? I think it's obvious that that's the case. But you know what's the- funny, Mike? Now you're saying the DNA. What if they go back and revisit that, if they have any left? If they have any left, but you, you use the word tainted. And Mm -hmm. I don't know if that that was the thing. But, uh, you know, back then, you know, ring cameras did not necessarily exist. Only the dog saw what happened. (laughs) Exactly. You know, (laughs) exactly. Uh, The uh, Ron Goldman, I mean, his family, I feel so bad for the Goldman family. For both of them, man. Because the parents, man, they age quickly after this because it's one thing for you to lose a child. But to lose a child in this manner, you know, and to have the media circus behind it and then to have to relive it all. In a civil trial years later. That's awful, man. Now, OJ Simpson did eventually go to jail for something else. If I wasn't mistaken, he roughed up somebody in a hotel in oh, Las Vegas. Because they had uh, his, stole memorabilia. his memorabilia. So he went in there with some of his crew and stole it back. It's like, you can't do that. Yeah, I don't know if it was stolen memorabilia. I think it was something that I just he wanted his stuff back or his old stuff back. Well, he said it was stolen, that they had stole it without his consent. And now they're selling it over here. Right. But the way that the people at that, let's say place of business obtained it was legal and oj simpson was pulling a, was, he was pulling a pete rose by just simply going out and and uh ransacking uh, the place too well but but also like selling autographs and things oh, yeah, like that yeah, because yeah. he needed to make a living and the whole line of i'm gonna find the killer and all that stuff oj simpson is a very in, i cannot wait for the new movie to come out about this okay yeah. you know there's got to be another one that comes 30 out 30 for 30 or something you know yeah. beyond what has come out already on lifetime yeah. and whatnot uh but oj simpson a lot of football fans hate to admit it but on the mount rushmore of running backs you might find oj simpson's na- a face up there because you know you know that it's it's uh you know some names like Emmett Smith and and Barry Sanders. Barry and, Sanders is the goat, dude. And you know you have the 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 the, the stars of the sixties and seventies, but OJ Simpson was that guy, Heisman Trophy winner. They don't want to put him on there. They don't want to put him on there, like a Pete Rose. You dude, know, <laughs> he, he's he was just an amazing. And I told my daughter this morning, I said, Gabby, how do you feel knowing that uh, OJ Simpson was one of your favorite actors growing up because he was so good in The Naked Gun. Yeah, he was. Funny, he was dude. so good. In that movie, the Hertz what, commercials, the Hertz commercials of him yeah. hurdling through, you know, and that was the interesting thing about O.J. Simpson was the fact that he was also the African American celebrity that seemed to be embraced by everybody. He was it, transcendent it, it, in a time yeah. when it didn't happen. I think it's Magic Johnson and O.J. Simpson that were the two that were that were like that that were accepted, yeah. and he seemed to be very likable. He was a good looking man. Um, but you know, he was also a very troubled man as well. Oh, yeah. And and then again, the accusation of June 12th, 1994 of uh, him being accused of killing his yeah, wife. You have Frank Harris yeah. on standby. Uh, but uh, it's, it's absolutely, um, you know, what a, what a crazy story this was. And it uh, kind of came to an end last night. Uh, the family of OJ Simpson saying that he has died at the age of 76 from cancer. Uh, we'll talk more about OJ. We'll talk more about the Spurs. Again, the Spurs playing the JV squad last night. <laughs> Thunder. But we're super excited because we have a special guest today. We're going to bring him on right now. You want to introduce I him? I see him. San Antonio royalty, Frank Harris. What's going on, What's my up, man? How have you been, man? Welcome to the Alamo City Sportscast. How's it going? Thank you for having me. Hey, man, we're having a great time over here. And we want this to be a fun interview, okay? So we're not going to yeah. inundate you with OJ Simpson talk. Oh, because man, that's a that. different thing. That That's not what we're doing here. But we're glad to have you on here because there's so much going on. And I was having this conversation with Joe about you the other day. I was like, you know what? We see so many interviews of Frank Harris over the years, you know, from, you know, radio with Sports Star and radio with you know, Ticket 760 and all the TV stations locally. But I kind of feel like I want to know more about Frank Harris, the person, you know, what's going on. And, and right now, uh, now that you are uh, with that job at UTSA and 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 working, what's the title again? It's like vice president of uh, of of what? 
So actually, it was actually a third party uh, for the university, but I actually resigned from that job. Oh, you did? Okay, yep. cool. So what are you up to these days? That's a great question. I'm trying to figure it out. I got a tea time at three o'clock. Um, so <laughs> nice. That. Where are you teeing uh, off at? So all my buddies, you know, I went to high school at Church Clemens. So we're yeah. going to head back over there and go to Olympia. Oh, dude, I love Olympia Hills, man. I've played yeah. that uh, several times. Uh, so I didn't realize you were big into golfing, man. The the Masters uh, kicking off right now. Right now, uh, we got three players at uh, minus one. Taylor Moore, uh, Danny Willett, and Eric Van Ruyen right now currently lead the Masters. But again, only about 15 people have teed off so far. Do you have a favorite golfer right now that you follow on the PGA? Oh, uh, man, I kind of just watch. Um, I was at the uh, the Open, the Valero Open yeah. on Saturday and Sunday. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, but I really just watch it, man. I, I just love golf. I just got into it probably about a year ago. So everything is still kind of relatively new, but I play golf probably two or three times a week. Uh, oh, nice. I I'm not the best, but I definitely enjoy it. Uh, it's fun. Um, and I just love going out there on the golf course with my boys. Now Look you, at what your friend says right uh, now. Yeah, yeah. So you want to talk about, talk about my game. My game, I have that natural slice. <laughs> where uh if yeah. it's a dog leg right yeah. if it's if it's dog leg right man i'm feasting on that one man. Big I'm left, though. i dog leg i dog left left <laughs> so if it's water if it's water over there ah uh, i'm yeah, dropping Do, you're, you're, you're dropping you're dropping it's going in the water every time now you playing with good balls out there or, or is it like me with the uh my friends make fun of me because i play with pro v1s that i suck and they're like why are you playing with such good golf balls you know, go to Walmart and get the generics, get the spalls. I'm playing with good balls too. I play like Taylor made a Pro V1. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go out there, I gotta ask the question. Um, you know, the cart girl comes around every once in a while. Are you uh drinking Gatorade? Are you drinking soda? Or are you drinking the occasional uh, Miller Light? So I don't drink beer, but I definitely if I'm with my boys from high school, they definitely get me drinks. So uh we definitely have a great time out there. Um have a little friendly gambling going on and whoever wins <laughs> gets some drinks afterwards so uh yeah. we have a great time out there though it's just a great getaway um be normal and just have fun with my friends hey i gotta add, tell you something frank this is a funny story but let me let mike tell you he was at the valero texas open and he just happened to miss the hole in one. Oh yeah okay so i'm <laughs> sitting at the 16 on thursday last week and uh, i was excited to see ricky fowler and rory mcelroy mm -hmm. they were paired together right mm -hmm. Now, where I was at was the VIP tent. You could see them tee off twice at the 11 and the 16. So I saw them tee off at the 11. It was great. They walked like five feet from me at the 16. And I saw them tee off at incredible vantage point. What I did not realize was that Jordan Spieth was the next pairing, was the next trio behind them. And as I was walking down the steps, I see Jordan Spieth take a hit. And then all of a sudden, I see the crowd just go crazy. So I didn't watch. I didn't see a hole in one. I heard a hole in one and it pissed me off because I was at the 16 for five and a half hours watching these guys go up and Perfect down. Perfect vantage point. Perfect vantage point. It was so brutal. I feel that I felt like I missed out, man. I didn't see any hole in ones. I, everybody was cheering, but I guess I was talking the whole time. I didn't see any good things. So, you know, uh, you're out there at the, uh, you're, you're going to go golf today at Olympia Hills. That That's amazing. And you, you say you golf two or three times. Do you play any other sports? I mean, what other things do you do to kind of, uh you know just kind of burn some burn some calories if you will burn calories besides working out yeah like, I mean, uh, like like do you do you do you play ball do you play baseball softball anything like that yeah you do not want to see me hit a baseball i'm i've never played in my life it's so bad so i would never even do that to myself um i'll play basketball here and there um but really just golf um basketball too much in my body my knees and Got it. i'm getting a little older my back and stuff but uh yeah. you know golf like i said um we golf all the time. Uh, and it's just, you know, on Mondays we had our, our off days during the uh, season. So every Monday I had to go out on the golf course, uh, just kind of get away from everything and uh, go have a good time. I'd like to see you and Frank go at it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where that slice is going to go. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think Frank Harris could outrun me, though. Okay. Oh, I, I think he could outrun me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is the first year that you're not going to be out, out there playing ball for a while, man. It, it, it's it, Is your body telling you that you should, you know, be out there? Or, or is it one of those things where you're just trying to tell yourself, hey, man, that part of my life is over. Uh, what's it like right now knowing that there's no season up ahead? Definitely not tell my body to go out there. I don't sounds bad, but I don't miss it. Um, I, I feel like I put all my time and effort into 
you know, the football. Um, I just had a memory pop up today. A, a year ago today, I had my fourth surgery of the year. Um, so last year during the springtime was terrible for me. I had a surgery in January, February, got infected in March, got a rush to the hospital, had emergency surgery in March. They said the infection didn't clear. I might, they might have to amputate my leg off. And then Whoa. had another surgery in April, which was a year ago today. So, you know, last season I wasn't even going to play that year because of all the injuries that I've been through. And, you know, my mental was all messed up. And I was telling coach that I didn't even want to play. Um, you know, it was real life stuff going on with my leg. So I was fortunate enough to go out there and play last year. Um, so to get back to a year um, to today, um, I definitely don't miss it. Uh, I, I definitely enjoy my life now. Just being a normal person. Um, you know, my life is so much more than just football. And uh, I finally realized that the older that I got. And I'm just blessed to be able to do, you know, play golf with my buddies and just have a good time being a normal person. Talking oh, yeah, to San Antonio man. Royalty, Frank Harris, legendary quarterback of the UTSA Roadrunners. Want to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, you know, that's amazing The what you overcome with all those injuries. And, and it, it's one of those things that we don't see. You know, I sit in section 108 over there at the Alamo Dome, right? Mm -hmm. Every game, you know, I pregame. Uh, I'm the one who's uh, slurring my words by the third <laughs> quarter, okay? Uh, but to, to hear that you have to go through that, the mental fortitude of having to, like, overcome injuries. At any point, did you think to yourself, man, this is just too much? Or were you always of the state of mind of, I got to get back? So, honestly, I've always said I got to get back. But this last time, you know, last year around this time during spring ball, uh, my leg was infected. I mean, I'm in a wheelchair. Uh, I couldn't do anything. I mean, my parents had to live with me for like two or three weeks. Uh, my mom had to bathe me. I just felt hopeless. I couldn't do anything by myself. Uh, I was just down bad. So at that point, I was done with football. I, I didn't want to do anything football-wise. I just want to be able to walk again. I couldn't walk. I couldn't take care of myself. It was terrible. So um, that was probably the only time I ever felt like, Football is done. I'm good with walking away from it. I just want to walk again. If I had to trade in football from walking, I'd do it 100%. Uh, and I was just fortunate enough, you know, God blessed me probably about two, about a month or two after that, probably in May or June, probably like June, started feeling a little bit better. July felt better. And then, you know, so I did no spring ball last year. Um, and I did uh, fall camp a little bit. Um, and then, you know, last season, you know, in, in the world that I wanted, to, it didn't end the way I wanted it to end, but, uh, you know, I was fortunate to go out there and play play the game of football that I loved. Um, I think God was uh, had a different direction for me, and that's ultimately why I decided to hang it up. You know, it's one thing to be taken care of by a physical therapist or somebody who works with a white robe on, but for it to be your mom. I mean, the, the looks that must have been exchanged back then must have been both loving and also painful at the same time. How would you describe that whole scenario of your mom kind of helping – you know, helping you recuperate. Yeah, it was just weird. You know, I'm a grown man. My mom is, you know, having to bathe me, and she's never seen me down like that because, you know, I've been through so many injuries, you know, ACLs, shoulder surgeries, um, but she's never seen me in that mindset. So it was definitely challenging for her. Um, and my dad actually was retired at the time, so he was with me throughout the day. Um, he's never seen me like that either. So everybody's really concerned about my well-being. You know, coach was, my teammates were, but – um, it was definitely a dark time. Uh, my, my mom just, you know, kept trying to tell me everything was okay. And, you know, she didn't like to see me like that. And I just didn't know what to expect, you know. I mean, we we're just praying, but it's not like I could go, just go rehab and get better. It, it literally was an infection. So mm -hmm. there's nothing that you literally can do besides take medicine. Um, so it was just bad, man. It was a, it was a dark stage for me, for sure. Um, and uh, I was just fortunate enough to get out of that, you know, that that time. Um, and looking back at it now, it was like, dude, it was crazy, you know, to jump a year now and see me run and walk and do all those things. And I had to go through that process again. It was definitely a blessing from God. We have a question coming in from our YouTube stream uh, from D'Lo. He says, hey, Frank, uh, that he tore his ACLs as well, had surgery for both. Wanted to know how you're feeling now and how did those injuries affect your playing style? Honestly, I feel like it never hindered my playing style. Um I've always told myself if I wasn't able to come back the same from my injuries, then I wouldn't come back at all. And I always work that way, you know, in the training room and in my recovery process and my rehab to, to to know that I'm gonna make sure that I do everything in this process to when I get to go back out on the football field, I'm not timid or I'm not looking over my shoulder. So uh, I definitely 
attack the rehab process very hard um, because I knew I wanted to come back and play football again. And I wasn't going to let, you know, two ACL injuries affect my career, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, one of our other listeners, uh, Chris Bettis, reaches out and says, leg off? I didn't know it was that bad. Damn. Uh, that was a surprise to me when you said that, that you could have lost a leg. When you are sitting there talking to these medical professionals and you hear the, those words that even it's a even if it's a remote possibility just two percent five percent ten percent did they even give you a percentage as to the odds of something like that happening honestly i don't really remember them saying a uh, percentage i just remember my mom saying if your leg keeps bothering you we're gonna take it to the hospital and i was like all right whatever so i went to the hospital like two in the morning they drew some blood i mean the blood was disgustingly it was like a brownish smelled terrible and that's when something was really wrong. Um, and they were like, okay, we're going to have to have, you know, emergency surgery right now. Um, and, you know, we might have to put a catheter in you or, you know, you might have to just be on pills um, for for the uh, for the meds. Um, and I was like, honestly, whatever it takes, you know, I just do not, do not want my leg to get taken off. I don't even like the thought of you even saying that that's a possibility, you know, if this infection doesn't clear. So it definitely got real, you know, that night. And, you know, after the surgery, and I just felt, like I said, hopeless, couldn't walk. Um, using a walker to try to get around the hospital. Um, I couldn't sleep. It, it was just bad. Like, my knee my knee was just so swollen up um, with just all type of stuff. And like I said, that's just a process that, that I've been through, and a lot of people didn't know that. Um, so, you know, when I went out there and played against uh, Houston and I had a terrible game, uh, you know, I had three picks. Uh, everybody was trying to get rid of me already. And that's that's what coach was trying to say when he was uh he had my back and was like y'all don't even know what he'd been through these last couple months because I did no spring ball, um I went in and I did fall camp just a little bit just because I couldn't get thrown into the fire, uh, getting all the reps that I'm normally getting, um, so that whole season was just me, it's a growing process uh, trying to get back, uh, fresh because I was all rusty for not doing nothing for you know months, um, but like I said it was a blessing to go out there and play with my teammates one more time and ultimately. You know, football was just enough for me. Talking to Frank Harris, legendary quarterback for the UTSA Road, Roadrunners, basically has every uh, record for the quarterback position <laughs> yeah. at UTSA. By the way, thank you for having a football team because when I was a graduate of UTSA back in 01, the ongoing saying was still undefeated because we didn't have <laughs> team back then. Uh, uh, Frank, you know, taking a look about the, the this team, okay, and and what you're what what's going to go ahead for the future of this team. Going out there this year to the Alamo Dome to watch them play, and and now in the AAC, and you were a part of that last year as well. Um, what do you expect this year from this team? I mean, are, do you have should there be any expectations of this team, or is it maybe something that we're going to kind of see along the way? How how would you you anticipate this team performing this upcoming season? Uh, I think we should be great. Um, I think that, uh, we have a great schedule in front of us. Um, we have a lot of great guys coming back. We have some. Good transfers come in, um, JUCO guys, and we have a lot of freshmen uh, stepping up as well. So I, I expect us to have another great season um, like we've been having. Um, but I do think the fans, some of the fans have getting gotten, have gotten kind of spoiled by our records. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and think that that's just easy to go, you know, double-digit wins um, every season. That is not normal at all. That's actually really hard. Um so somewhere down the line, I'm not saying this, I'm not saying next year, but somewhere down the line, we're going to have a, a growing stage. Uh, re, we're going to regrow, whether it's, you know, six game win, six game seasons, we'll make it to a bowl game and win or, you know, seven game seasons. But we have to accept that and know that we're still in a young stage. Uh, we're in a new program. I mean, we're in a new um, division with AAC. Um, and it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. You know, yeah. all teams don't just keep on going up here at all times um so at some point we're gonna hit that and we're gonna we, we just as fans we're gonna have to hit reality and understand understand that that's part of the process um and that we don't suck um <laughs> even like this past this past year i think we were like one in three and everybody was like freaking out i'm like dude we just played houston we just played uh tennessee and we just played army it's like it's not like we're playing some scrubs, like we're, we're playing some good teams there. You know what I mean? Relax. When we hit conference, we're going to bounce back. So I just think people just think or expect that we went, you know, 11-0, and and then we went 
and then we lost a couple games after that. Uh, and then the next year we went like 12 and two that that's the expectation and we can't ever, you know, foresee nothing less than that. And that's just not reality. So that's just my challenge to the fans. Just, you know, relax, let the season progress and don't write us off or, or don't say, uh, you know, we're not the same team anymore because every team is going to be different each and every year. Um, but we got to just see how that pans out. Man, I get it as a Spurs fan. I mean, it's been five years in a row of losing seasons, <laughs> but I'm done with it. <laughs> we have a <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. I got a question for you, Frank. You know, you being an athlete, you know, and when you see somebody as of, of Wemby's caliber, being able to move the way he does on the court, I mean, what do you think of uh, Victor Wembeyama this year? Have you seen him play uh, any Spurs games? Oh, man, that dude's a freak. I went to go watch him play. I mean, I was courtside. I mean, he just looks freakishly scary just by how he's built. It's like yeah. not common. Like, that's very unique in the the way he can play basketball. You know, you, you think of somebody that's that tall, that they're, you know, not very athletic, you know, kind of could just do certain things well. You know, he could dribble well. He could shoot well. He could run well. He could pass well. It's kind of like. He might, he is going to be the next greatest thing in in, in sports uh, and basketball. He will, he will be the face of the NBA in a couple of seasons. So uh, I'm definitely excited. The Spurs got him. Hopefully, hopefully we can re, uh, retain him. Um, and hopefully the Spurs are, are up next. It's so cool yeah. to see. And the Spurs are reportedly going to be getting a new stadium sometime soon downtown. Uh, I have to bring this up because I'm a UTSA football fan. I go to all the games for the most part. Uh, I'm usually tipsy by the third quarter or or by the time I'm walking in. I pregame hard, okay? There's a reason why I don't have a press pass to the games because I'd rather drink before the game than be sober and interview you guys afterwards. Oh, but, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't enjoy watching games at UTSA home games, okay? The, the, the Alamo Dome, to me, is not the greatest place to play. It, it just, from a fan standpoint, now, I know a lot of fans love going to the alamo dome i've never been a big fan is it cavernous be, be, is it because of the way it's built yeah or? i i i hope one day utsa gets its own stadium on campus a 35 40 000 seat stadium yeah. somewhere on campus you want it to be more intimate but more yeah. intimate right but i gotta ask you frank you know, you know, you don't have to be PC about it. Did you like playing at the Alamo Dome? And in the future, do you think that UTSA should be playing there, or do you think that they should be somewhere closer to campus? Um, I think the Alamo Dome is just perfect because, like I said, it's already a dome. Uh, Seventy degrees uh, doesn't affect our our game plan, whether it's raining outside, whether it's hot outside, uh, nothing like that. Um, and you know, growing up in in, in high school. If you made it to the playoffs, you know, it was like a special privilege to play inside the Alamo Dome. Yeah. So it was just pretty cool and unique to, just to play inside the Dome. And uh, I know for for a fact, you know, the coaches love it um, at UTSA and me and my teammates love it as well. So I don't think we're going to ever get a stadium on campus. Um, I don't know where it would even be at, uh, but we definitely love the venue at, uh, at the Alamo Dome. Um, and we appreciate that it's always 72 degrees. Joe, Let me ask you Joe, a question, Joe. Frank. Joe, you know we have the Jeremy Sohan apology form. Yeah. I need to have the Alamo Dome apology, apology form. form. I'll I'll back off. Well, well I'm going <laughs> to if, if Frank has told me to back off, I will back off. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spotlight, Mike, because Mike was saying, Frank, full disclosure here. Oh my God! And one of the games was, was I the, sober or drunk? No, you were sober. This, okay, this time you were. Sober. Oh, I know where you're going with. He this. said, "You know what? The crowd here, it's kind of quiet." Okay, first of all, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> the okay, so so from from twenty from the twenty yard line to the end zone on both sides, I think the I think the crowd does a fantastic job. For some reason, between the twenty and twenty, it's kind of quiet. It's kind of corporate for me. I, I I don't know, man. I think that the student section does a fantastic job on both ends of the of the of the field. It's for some reason that twenty to twenty, hmm, we need to we need to get them amped up, man. It's a college football game. This is a big league game. You no, know, you were you had the video, and he's like, "See, it's quiet so in like, here. What's going on? It's quiet in here. People I'm are like, doing their taxes over Mike. here. Scream, <laughs> shout. Do I need to get you guys drinks? Let's make this happen." But as the game went on, the crowd got more livelier, dude. They I don't do. know where do you sit at? What where do I sit? I sit at uh, around the ten yard line. Okay, so it's loud where I'm by at. Our students, by by uh, the UTSA home side. Uh, UTSA home side, but a 10-yard line. Um, 
it, it's it's pretty good over there. It's kind of the middle of the field, the, the more expensive tickets, if you will, the thirty to thirty. Oh, yeah, that's why. Is that probably why? Yeah, that's exactly why. <laughs> Who's gonna? I, yeah, that's exactly the reasoning. Wait, and yeah, I'm not. I'm not expecting the higher ups. You're not gonna be screaming. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna expect them to be like an SEC crowd or a Big Twelve crowd because I don't. You know, UTSA football is still so new, right? It's still so new to the city. It's only been what 13, 14, 15 years or so. It's still relatively new, and I kind of feel like you know the fans need to kind of grow up with it and be part of it and be more diehard about it and i think it's getting better as the years go on it's better today than it was 5 years ago and 5 years ago was better than it was 10 years ago uh, but i got to see that crowd out there because aside from 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 uh, spurs basketball the spurs basketball utsa football should be equals in my opinion my opinion but uh, we're talking we're joined by frank harris of utsa he's a utsa legend also a Clemens, it's a Buffalo, right? The Clemens Buffaloes? It is. Uh, I'm a high school basketball official, so I've done Clemens games before, man. They, they okay. can play out there. So here's the thing. We, we like talking about pop culture here, okay? Uh, obviously, you've played football your entire life. I don't know. What is your favorite football movie of all time? Favorite football movie would probably have to be, goodness, there's a lot of them. You got like... Oh, you got the Friday Night Lights, of course. Yeah, you got. Um, is it Pony Express? Isn't that, isn't that a yeah. movie? Pony Express. I make sure I said it right. You got like Gridiron Gang. You got like a lot. You got you got a lot of them. I, I probably couldn't pick just one of them. Um, Meet the Titans. I don't know. It's, it's it's a lot of them. I remember, remember the Titans. I said meet the Titans. Remember the Titans. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it's so many of them. Um, especially I like the 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 real true the the true ones. Yeah, because um, you're, you're talking about movies that are like very serious in nature. Yeah, serious. Like, remember the, remember comments. the Titans, yeah. which I saw for the first time last year. Yeah. I thought it was a good movie. Um, what? That's the first, first time I've seen it. Was last year. Oh my goodness! Dude. Oh Frank, Mike oh, is living in a goodness. bubble, man. He's never seen a lot of movies. Yeah, man. I couldn't get through Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was one of the most boring movies I've I don't ever know seen what that in is. my life. That that won best picture <laughs> this year. I will let either. you know. I, I will. I will let you know. It is boring. <laughs> it is boring, but everyone loves it. Everyone well, loves it. I have an attention span of like a five year old, so if it's not <laughs> good off the jump street, then uh, I'm definitely not watching it. Y'all would get along perfect, Mike. Me and Frank, we're gonna go <laughs> golf, baby. I'm all over golf. the place. Man, I, I'll get the teeth. I'll, I'll I'll pay the green fees over at Olympia <laughs> Hills, man. Just have a few drinks and talk movies with you. It would, would it be like, man, we hated dude, this movie. Yeah. Uh, now, what about like like Waterboy? Waterboy is actually good. It's a funny movie. I like Waterboy. It's okay. Good. The replacements. The replacements is pretty funny with Keanu Reeves. Never seen it. Sorry. You never seen that one. That one oh, was okay. It was, was funny, it was about dude. scab football players in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. The fictional NFL team. It was it was actually pretty good. But uh, we're joined by Frank Harris. We we talk about you know obviously a lot of pop culture references here. Uh, I I always find it interesting when I find out what somebody's celebrity crush was when they were growing up. Okay, so if you go back in time and you think, man, this was the celebrity that kind of you know made me googly eyed when I was younger, who would that be? So I'm the oh. youngest of four. My oldest brother is 35. Yeah. So I kind of just. Whatever he kind of, whoever he thought looked good, I, I thought looked good kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was at the time when um, ATL came out and like stumped the art. And uh, it's always Lauren London and uh, Megan Good. That was like, nice. Wow. Okay, nice. That was like the two, I, like growing up, that was the two biggest crushes. Everybody, everybody, it wasn't even just me. Everybody I grew up with was like, dude, those are the baddest girls in the world right now. Nice. Now, growing up, uh, did you have posters on the wall growing up of like athletes or or anything like that? I did growing up back in the day. I mean, I'll show you my yeah. age. I had Akeem Olajuwon <laughs> and David Robinson, right? Uh, who who are the athletes that you had on the wall right now? And who would you say are the ones that, man, if you had some hard earned money to go spend to go watch a, an athlete play, not named Victor Wembanyama, who would it be? So of course, you know, I had. Uh, I was big into to, to wrestling. Of course, I was a little kid. Nice. So I had, like a John Cena poster. I had um, LeBron James, Michael Vick. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else I had. I had a lot of stuff all around my room. Um, but if I had to go pay money to to watch somebody play, it'd definitely be LeBron James. But he never plays in San Antonio. 
Yeah. It makes me so <laughs> mad. I always get tickets to the games. He never plays. Who do you cheer for in the NFL? My family loves the Cowboys, but I, I really just watch particular players. I don't really watch. I don't really have a team. Um, because I tell everybody this. Okay. You're a fan. You're a betting fan, or this is your team that you've been watching your whole life. When they lose a game, do they get upset? Yes. They go home. They're still millionaires. They move on the next day. You get more upset than that particular player does after they lose. So why am I going to love this team, put all my time and effort into this team, and then they lose, and then their star player doesn't care, but I care more? No, I'm not <laughs> going to do that. So, so I don't watch teams no more. Nope. I just watch players. Brutal, man. I, you know, it, it's it's funny that you say that you, you, you watch players, right? Uh, I'm a I'm a diehard. I was a diehard Houston Oilers fan growing up, right? Warren Moon was my guy. Yeah. Man. Uh, I have interviewed so many athletes over the years that very rarely do I get stumped and I turn into a fanboy. I met Warren Moon and I lost my mind last <laughs> year. Uh, do you know how how tongue tied I was? I named the entire offense and defensive starters, like all 24, in front of him, and he's like, "Damn, you were a fan." And then I'm like, "Why the hell did I just do that?" Has there been an athlete that you've met? That you were stumped, that you were like, oh my God, uh, I cannot believe I'm meeting them. Has there been that guy? No, I don't think uh I've ever got to that point to where um I've gotten like that. No. Uh right now, you you were we were talking about like what you're gonna be doing career-wise and whatnot. I tell you what, if I was a news director of a KSAT Ken's OAI KBB, if I was a director of like a ticket 760 or a uh San Antonio sports star i would have been all over you by this point you have such a great personality you should be doing the broadcasting type of thing you really should especially with utsa football broadcasts and stuff like that is that something that you would look at doing like you know if the aac called up or or the uh whatever networks are airing the uh the games whether it be an espn2 or an espn3 is that something that you would ever aspire for i definitely would um and I told somebody that not too long ago that uh, I have a knowledge of, of the game offensively and defensively because I play quarterback. So I know all the you know coverages and and, and the play calls, especially for UTSA. I know all the offensive plays. Um, so I definitely would love to do something like that as well. I'm um, keeping my options open. Um, I, I would love to do a lot of things, um, but um, just whatever comes my way, um, just – Trying to see what 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 what's best for me and just weigh my options out. Have he's you, a great interview, by the he, way. He's, he's so, great, so like chill, man. So chill, and, <laughs> and and beyond that, you have a personality. Yeah, you have a personality. That, that that's what I wanted to see today. Appreciate it. So when I heard your name, when when uh, you know you were brought to to my attention, I was like, that's exactly what I want to be because, like I said, I was a sports producer, a news producer for so long in the city. I would have been all over you, baby. I would have been like, dude. <laughs> Let's hey, make this we happen. We have a question to ask right now. One of our, our listeners, our yeah. viewers here, is saying they want to ask you, MJ or LeBron? Who do you <laughs> like more? That's not even a question for me. I'm going to say LeBron all, all the time. Me and Coach Trey, uh -huh. my dad always argue about that every time. <laughs> every time. Give me your argument. Give me your argument. Every time. Give me you, your argument. It depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for all-around player, I'd say LeBron because he could do – he's 6'8", he could dribble – he can rebound, he can score, he can do whatever you want. If you're looking for a score or just off like just dominant, okay, I would take I would take Michael Jordan for sure. So I would say overall player, I'm taking LeBron James every time. Very nice. Now we talked about you being a an analyst potentially. I don't know if you've taken steps or if anyone's reached out to you from any of these uh uh, these entities, the ESPNs or the the Bally Sports of the world. Uh, but I want to get your opinion on the upcoming NFL draft. The NFL draft begins two weeks from today. And already most of the mock drafts have four quarterbacks going in the top five. Yeah. So they have the names out there are Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams of USC, Jalen Daniels of LSU, where my daughter graduated from, JJ McCarthy of uh, Michigan, and then Drake May of uh, UNC all projected to go in the top five. If you were the GM of the Dallas Cowboys and you had to get a quarterback, who would it be? Which of these four guys do you like the most? Well, you know, I'm a little biased because, uh, you know, I went to the Manning camp with a couple of those guys. Uh, but honestly, I'd probably say Drake. Uh, Drake is just smooth. Drake Mays, 
cool, calm, and collective all the time. Um, he has a great arm. He's a good dude, very humble. Um, so I'll probably say Drake May, even though he probably won't. But if I was them, I'd definitely go Drake May. That's interesting. That's, I that find that to be fascinating. A lot of people were talking about Jaden Daniels being a potential injury risk because he likes to run from time to time. He's not a running quarterback. He's a quarterback who can run, right? Uh, he played for LSU. Uh, so I cheer for that. I go to LSU games every year because that's where my daughter has gone to school. Uh, but at the same time, do you think that that he's an injury risk because of the way he plays? Uh, I think his style will definitely change when he when he makes the NFL. Um, just because you're not gonna see a guy um, like him run the ball as much because those guys are way much faster and bigger. Um, so. I'm sure the the play style will, will be tailored around him, but I don't even think the the coach would even call him to run the ball that much, um, just because of the aspect. But then again, he could also transform over to like a Lamar Jackson uh, kind of kind of play. But even Lamar Jackson, after so many seasons, has, has stopped running the ball, mm -hmm. you know, as much um, because you want you want last too long. You keep doing those things and taking those hit by those guys. I think the cautionary tale is Robert Griffin the third. Yeah, I mean man. he was somebody True. who lit it up his his rookie season, uh, but the guy could not slide. Like for, he was always upright in this weird way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's me too. I can't say anything. I can't say anything. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not act like I don't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, Elias reaching out to us on a YouTube stream, wanting to know your impression of Dak Prescott is because he? Dak Prescott. You know, controversial guy. You know, he's polarizing guy in 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 things. He's a nice guy. Uh, we 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 know that Dak Prescott's a good guy, right? But the fact of the matter is, there are some people who believe that he can lead the Cowboys to a Super Bowl. No, Others no. who think he just doesn't have it in him. What are your thoughts? No, he cannot lead the Cowboys to to a Super Bowl. Uh, I just think a quarterback is defined by what they do postseason. So that's playoff. I could care less what you do preseason. Like during season, um, like I like you said, Dak Prescott um, seems like a great guy, genuine, very humble, godly. I'm a fan of him, but until you could win postseason, I just I, it, that's where that's where it all counts. You know those clutch moments and those clutch games. You know that's where your career is defined as whether you want to admit it or not. You could do whatever you want. You know in the regular season, have a, the, the best record ever. If you lose first round. What are you going to be remembered as? Oh, he's he's won 500 games and lost three, or 500 games and lost 30, but they've all come in, in you know the playoffs. You're not going to be you're not going to be considered one of the greatest then if you lose every playoff game. So that's kind of where I see him. Um, like I said, he's a great quarterback, but he just can't get past that hump every time, every year. Cowboys do good regular season, and then every year. When a playoff comes, we just know where to be found. So, my man, Frank uh, Harris, <laughs> I just think that something has to change, and I don't know what it is. I he, like him, man. He, he says it like it is. He's San Antonio royalty, baby. Oh, yeah, he's San Antonio royalty. <laughs> okay, so you and I are in Vegas, right? We're at the sports book. I give you a hundred bucks, and I say, go bet on any team to win the Super Bowl this upcoming season. What team are you betting on this season? This upcoming season, yes. I mean, there's been so many trades. I don't even know who's gotten traded already. Uh, Texans look, I don't know. Texans, <laughs> they look a little good, but I don't know if they'll put all that together. Yeah. Uh, some, I, I hate to say it, but it makes me mad to say the Chiefs, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they keep doing it. Uh, they're, 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 they're like the Golden State Warriors a couple of years ago. It yeah. just makes me, it just uh, pisses me off. But, I mean, they're good, though. Yeah, and, um, and Mahomes is just entering his prime. Which yeah, is that's what I'm saying. Like, what are we doing? Like, could somebody stop this dude? Now, no, uh, let me ask Texas, you this. Let he's me a ask Texas you this. guy, so I got to go for him. Uh, so look, yeah, let me ask you this. You you watched the, these games last year at the NFL games. Was What are your thoughts of Taylor Swift going to these games? Because I believe that she and, and Travis Kelsey are a legit couple because when they first got together, everyone thought, oh, well, it's because of marketing. You know, yeah. it's things like that. And then people started hating her as they kept going on further into the season because they were showing her in cutaways and things like that. But it was only for like 30 seconds. I know. But you what know? were your thoughts when you were watching <laughs> these games and seeing Taylor Swift out there and then the reaction that people were giving? Yeah, I'll be honest. Sometimes I don't want to see her. I want to watch the end zone celebration. <laughs> I want to see the, the replay. I don't care about Taylor Swift up in the suite with 
the family's like, I don't care. Like, I just genuinely don't care that she's at the game. She's going to go to the games. So I definitely they took it and ran with it. But from there, on their defense, marketing value went crazy up. So why would you not do that? I know a lot of kids, literally people that I know who have daughters or, uh, you know, nieces that are, that are girls who love the Chiefs just because of Taylor Swift, who will watch an NFL game when the Chiefs play just to see Taylor Swift. So it goes both ways, you know, from, from our perspective that want to watch football, we don't care about her, but from the NFL side, that was great marketing. Um, it brought a lot of attention. Um, the streams went up, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it definitely was good publicity to them. So you can't knock them for doing that. But as a sports uh, fan, I didn't like it. Just be honest. Okay. Well, I, I'll, you know what? Well, I'll have the Taylor Swift apology yeah. form signed as well. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a Taylor Swift guy, man. I, I, I love her. Yeah. Oh, of course uh, I know. I, I, I'm going to take my daughter to go see her yeah. in uh, in New Orleans. You're going to drop October. three grand on the tickets? Two, three grand, each? 1500 each, man. Jeez. You got to do it. Got to do it. Hey, Frank, let's talk about some music, all right? Give me a musician. I don't know if you have Spotify or Pandora, whatever you 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 do for streaming services. But what's the one musician you listen to that people would be surprised that you listen to? Yeah, what's in his playlist? Well, let me tell you this: May tenth and eleventh, I'll be at the Alamo Dome to watch Luke Combs because that's my favorite country artist. Nice. Really? Wow, dude! I I can sing every. I know every Luke Combs song. Uh, I love country. Now, um, Luke Combs, that dude is just. He seems like a very cool guy. Uh, I like everything about him, and uh, his music is just pretty. It's just, it's just very good. So, um, I would probably say a lot of people are surprised that I like country, but I grew up country. You know, I grew up with horses. Um, every Thursday during the football season, um, I go dove hunting back in shirts with my with my buddies um, every Thursday. And you know, finally, coach found that I found out that I did that, and uh, he wasn't a fan of it. He didn't want something happening to my shoulder. Um, <laughs> but I go hunting. You know, I went hunting this past deer season, um, and I go fishing. So um, a lot of people don't know that about me, that I, I grew up country. I go to rodeos. Uh, I do all those things. Like I said, grew up with two horses, um, so we had to take care of them. Um, so definitely uh, I'm very unique um, in that sense. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty country. You got a cowboy hat, too? Oh, do I have a cow yes, I have a cowboy yeah. hat. All right. Cowboy you, boots, are, cowboy hat, I don't have a hat. Are you more San Antonio rodeo or are you more fiesta? Rodeo. I'm not really big. I'm not gonna say I'm not big into Fiesta. I don't know much about Fiesta. Dad, don't get me wrong. I will be there having a great time. See, I love this. But, I love this guy. I love this guy. I don't know much about it. I'm gonna have my medals on. I'm gonna be, you know, Fiesta. Yeah, like having a great time. I'm gonna, you gonna be jamming see me there. Y'all didn't see me there. You be jamming <laughs> at Tejano? No, I don't. But if you put it on, I might. If I got to drink to me, I might start dancing. <laughs> I don't know what they say. I don't know nothing going on. But listen, oh, he, 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 he's just vibes are crazy him. though. I'm always I'm a big vibe guy. You know, if we having a good time, if everybody else is dancing, I might get out there start dancing too. I, I don't know, but you I'm know from the San Antonio, so that's just hey man, if hips aren't lying on the stage, man, that, that's good, dude. I mean. You know what's the old saying? If the beat's all right, she'll dance all night. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I don't, I don't like certain music. Oh come on, you do not like Tejano, dude. Man. I've danced Tejano. <laughs> if there's, if there's a, you know, nice booty out there doing it and 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 all that stuff, I will go in that direction. I will oh, dance whatever I need to dance. True, to get with true that girl. story, Frank. I gotta tell you this because we make fun of my boy Mike all the time because he comes up with these tall tales, right? <laughs> and he says that he's one and zero in fiesta fights. Yes, dude. I am. I am. I, I got into one fight at Fiesta at Oyster Bake 15 years ago, and I won that fight. Do you believe him? Do you think this is true or false, Frank? Now, let me tell you the let me tell you the backstory. Yeah, what's I the backstory? I was married at the time, and this guy went up to my wife and groped her. Just like, just grabbed her in the butt and was trying to feel her up, and she was all startled and all that stuff. And uh, literally, I, was, I had a beer, and I literally said, hold my beer. And I went and I just clobbered the guy. Well, I'll be honest with you. If I was with you and that happened, I'd probably would have been one and on a fight too, because I would probably hit him too. Yeah. See, there one you and know. He baby. believes you. One and oh. I believe that. I believe that. And I, was, I, I, I don't like that. And I was yeah. one and one in, in, in middle school fights. So two and <laughs> one, one for one. career. <laughs> two and one a career. Hey, speaking of fighting, 
Uh, Mike oh. Mike Tyson, uh, Jake Paul fighting at the uh, at Jerry World this summer. Do you care about that fight at all? I'm actually going to it. Really? I heard a lot of, heard a lot of rules though, like that yeah. favor Jake Paul. Is that true? That is true. Because it's That's an exhibition cool. fight, so there's going to be certain things they can't do. And I believe that the rounds they're going to be shorter as far as the minutes go, so they're going to be less. Well, hopefully Mike Tyson wins. I, I like Mike Tyson, but. Dude, that'd be I don't brutal. know what the rules are. That'd be brutal. Talking to Frank Harris, San Antonio legend. People are asking the question. Like several people have asked this question about your favorite restaurants in town. It's like multiple people have said that in the threads today. Yeah. Like, what's your favorite place like, to like, go? Like, to, you, what's what? Well, give me two or three restaurants. You're like, man, I will go that place anytime, any day. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna sound bougie, uh, <laughs> but Blue Prime. I mean, that's my place. I love going there. Uh, I have my birthday dinner there. Um, pretty pricey, not gonna lie, pretty pricey. Yeah, uh, I love there, and then probably about once a month, I go to uh, G. Alexander. I give him another steak there, I love mm -hmm. the steaks, G. Alexander. And then, uh, my guy Danny at uh, Box Street, um, over here by La Guterra. Um, it's a great vibe in there if I've never been. Um, it's a brunch place, but I mean, it's just a great vibe all around. And uh, I go there, I go to Perry's, the the, the pizza spot. Um, and I'm, I'm everywhere, dude. I, I'm, I'm a regular guy like everybody else. I'm not a uh, high roller or, or big time guy. You probably see me out eating all the time. Yeah. I was at Yard House last night. Um, I'm everywhere. Uh, Let's put, put you on the time. spot here, Frank. I want to put you on the spot here because there's a big debate here amongst the San Antonio faithful. Whataburger or Burger Boy? I don't think he's tried Burger Boy. Burger Boy, what well, is Burger Boy? Oh man, we gotta, uh, we gotta, we gotta get take him Burger, Burger Boy. Boy, man. You know, so it, let me. Okay, listen. This is where I get a lot of heat from too. I'm not a Whataburger fan. I don't like Whataburger. The burgers to me at Whataburger are not good. All right. Now at nighttime, I'll get a honey butter chicken biscuit for sure. I get a patty <laughs> melt, and I get a barbecue chicken strip sandwich. But if you ever see me eating a burger from Whataburger, something's going on with me. It's not. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> so I'm not gonna say. I'd probably go Burger Boy just because I don't like Whataburger's Boy, burgers. Local. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Whataburger used to be so good, man. man and then around 2018, off, 2019, it kind of tailed off. I'm a big Bill Miller guy, man. Bill Miller. Bill I, Miller? I, Dude. <laughs> Come Dude. out. What, what's, going, what's going on? <laughs> you don't like Bill Miller? For what? The, well, the I barbecue? Love, I love the breakfast there. I, I, the, the breakfast, breakfast there. Breakfast tacos. Cool. The fried Bill chicken Miller's. there is amazing. The barbecue? Oh, my eh. God. It's a, it's, it's a, what's your go-to Frank wait to get tacos. Oh, well, you know what? Tacos. Not, no, tacos. Oh. You go to tacarias for tacos. That, yeah. that, oh, okay. that, that, what breakfast are you talking about? Oh dude, the pancakes are really good. Oh uh, my goodness. He said pa Bill well, Miller's pancakes. Yes, they do. They do. Dude, they got on, the best man. brownies. They got the, the best pie there. They got the best fried chicken there. The chicken strips. Got chicken the at Bill Miller's. <laughs> yes. You see here talking to you. See this? <laughs> I'm only three shades off, man. No. <laughs> We're all wanted to say. We're all wanted to say. <laughs> Dude, this has been. Hey, this has exceeded expectations. Yeah, this is a great I, interview. I, 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 I think that people are gonna not like Frank Harris as much because they're gonna realize that he's seventy percent me. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, and I'm so picky. I'm the pickiest person you probably ever meet. I'm like, he's Mike's doppelganger, dude. It's like, <laughs> what? Bad, I, am, I am the chubby, middle-aged, Hispanic version of Frank Harris. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best chicken spot, Frank? Where do you like your chicken from? Well, I'll be honest with you. I, don't, I, 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 eat, I eat pretty clean, so I don't really eat, yeah. um, you know, like junk I said, food. If it, yeah, I don't really eat junk food yeah. uh, no more. Um, so, I, of course, you can never go wrong with, like, uh, churches, uh Popeyes, but like I said, I don't really eat too much fried. Yeah, you know, I used to eat more. So, like I said, it sounds bad, but I eat a lot of steak. I like steaks. Yeah, um, so a big steak guy, and then I have meal preps that I eat. Um, oh, okay. you know, on a daily basis. I'm going to Bob's Chop House for lunch today. I've never been there, so I hope it's pretty good. That the steak uh, place? Yeah, the at uh, La Cantera, the rim. Yeah, we need to go. We need to take it to a better steakhouse. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I've never been. You might be right about. Yeah, that. that's the reason why you've never been. It's the reason why you've never been to Bob's. Okay, give me your 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 drink of choice. We're at a bar, and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna get uh, this, and uh, my guy over here wants this. What do, what what are you ordering? 
So this is another, I get knocked for this all the time. I like fruity drinks. I don't want to taste no alcohol. <laughs> so the sweeter, the better for me. I don't want, if I could taste alcohol, it's too strong. Just give it to my buddy. If I, if, if it's sweet, but it still gets the job done, that's me. So we go out to eat uh, somewhere. I probably get uh, strawberry mango margarita okay. or strawberry or mango. So happy hour at uh, 54th. Yeah, there you go. Me. I'm there. I'm there all the time. Uh, but if you go to a bar, probably a tequila pineapple. There you go. Okay. okay, so 54th Street with the heaviest and biggest, most expansive menu that has ever existed. That thing is massive. It's like Cheesecake Factory. But I like the mango margarita, and I respect the fact that you like to have a a not so strong drink. Maybe a strong drink, but a a, a free drink because you know there's a stigma to that, and I I, I, I endorse it. I endorse it. You're supposed to enjoy yourself while drinking, you know? Yeah, I literally it, don't care. People make fun of me all the time. Like, is that your drink or is that for, for them? <laughs> uh, that's mine, and I don't care if you make fun of me because that's what I like, <laughs> and I don't care. It, like, I don't – I'm that's that's me, though. I don't care what somebody says about me. I, I am who I am. Um, you know, I'm very respectful. I don't ever disrespect nobody. But when it comes to me and what I like and what I do, you know, that's me. If you want to make fun of me, that's on you. I don't care. So, I yes, mean, I'm going to order the fruitiest drink every time, come with a swirl on it with the with the blower. sugar around the rim, you know, and if there's, you know, my girl beside me, that's my drink. That's not hers. She's not getting that. She might get a manly drink more than me, but that's okay. It's mine. <laughs> I don't care about it. Because you're San Antonio royalty, baby. And that I, is it's, the not, one. it's not even that. I don't. I just don't care. Like, it, it is what it is. I'm like that with spicy food. It's like, why does it have to be so spicy? I don't mind a little kick, right? Yeah. But there's some people who just want it to be so oh, stinking hot. Man. And I'm like, how do you enjoy that? I get in trouble for that, too. I eat nothing hot. Nothing hot. <laughs> and like, dude, are you from San Antonio? You don't even eat. Nope. I don't eat. I don't eat hot sauce. I don't eat hot wings. I don't eat nothing hot. So I get bashed for that all the time, too. I get bashed for all type of stuff. Dude, he is 80% Jimenez at this point. He man. is. He's podcasts, man. Give, give him an outlet. Just for uh, real. It, it's very therapeutic. People ask, you know, why, do, why do we do this show? It's therapeutic, man. You know what would be That's cool, funny. Frank, is to get you on a spaces, like Twitter spaces. That is so cool to do it. What is that? Spaces. When you get on the X, right, and you do a spaces, you can just get in there and you can just ch chat about whatever you want. And then you just get all these fans that come in. And they can just get on the stage and they can just chop it up with you. You can talk about anything from life, sports, really anything. That's I never happening. heard of that. Take, that yeah. take it over to him. We got to do that. Cool, like man. that. Yeah, we yeah. got to do that one time. And, I had to get connected to the fans, man. I like to be connected with the fans so they know who I am. Yeah. It, it is great because you could just, just randomly go out there and create a space. And, and it, it, there's an outlet there that people realize that you're doing it, right? Because it comes out as a post. And people just kind of click on there and you see all the numbers of people who are on there. And they will raise their hand. Yeah, they will, they they will click a button when they want to talk. And you can say, uh, hey, uh, Joe, uh, uh, what, what do you want to ask? And yeah. it's a very cool thing to have an interactive thing. Uh, like usually that. we do this after games, you know, after Spurs games, after, yeah. uh, you know, Cowboy games and things like that. So it's pretty cool to have an outlet to kind of speak and be part of the the fandom. Because, yeah. because the, the, the transition that you're going through from being the quarterback for so long at UTSA and and – and no longer on the field, but you're an ambassador still for the school in some respect. Um, people want to know about you. People want to see you. And, and you're loved in this city. And the biggest asset that you have, if I could give any advice for somebody who's been in the media for so long, I was a TV reporter for 10 years. I was a producer for, for 10 years as well. Um, your, your biggest asset is your name because people love you. Yeah. <laughs> people love you. They should be knocking down your door. And it's just one of those things. I remember years ago, I had a conversation with Ricky Williams, you know, UT legend, yeah, I know uh, you know, in R Ricky was, uh, you know, he's, he's friends with people in my family. And so uh, when he was getting onto the uh, Longhorn network and we were talking about it, I, I remember telling him, I'm like, dude, you don't need to be X's and O's guy, dude. You know, they have other people doing that. Just be yourself and just be the the personality and then chime in what you need to say when you mm -hmm. feel that it's appropriate to say it. You know, people love you, Frank. And and, uh, you know, as, as a UTSA football fan, I appreciate all that you did. And to learn today about how bad the injuries were, about your, um, you know, how the dedication you had for this team. We didn't even get into conversations about Coach Trailer at all. 
Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you still chop it up with him? Do you still talk to him from time to time? That's my dude. I just talked to him uh, yesterday. Uh, he's a great guy. You know, what y'all see uh, is definitely, you know, how he is. You know, and people try to say, you know, is he really like that? Like, he genuinely is like that all the time. Like, he, you probably never hear him yell. <clears throat> I mean, he will. He <clears throat> doesn't yell, doesn't disrespect you, treat you, you know, like a man. And he's a great guy, and I love him, and uh, we're fortunate enough to have him at UTSA. <clears throat> UTSA, man, the get going late August. Uh, I know G.J. Kenny over at Texas State. That's going to be a big game there in San Marcos this year. Turning into a rivalry. And the fact that G.J. Kenny is, and his family are so close to Coach Trailer's family mm -hmm. makes it even more funny, even more remarkable. Yep. G.J. is a great dude, too. Um, you know, after we played them, <clears throat> he wrote me a letter um, and uh, sent it to me, and I got it. Um, he's a great guy. Have a ton of respect for him. He's definitely up and rising coaches uh, out there. Uh, he's definitely changed Texas State already with, within a year. Um, I'm just excited for his future. Um, he's a great dude. He's a great coach, and I'm excited for him. Man, G.J. Kenny is a coaching mercenary, dude. He does, he does not – he is not going to have roots. He will be at Texas State for two or three years, turning around like he did over at Incarnate Word. And he's gone. At Washington State, he's gone. <clears throat> he's not like Trailer, who's going to be around for a long time and 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 hopefully be someplace. Although A and M did come knocking on the door for an interview, did you think at any point he was gone? Uh, he's only you only leave for two schools. I won't say the names of the schools, um, but uh, you know. Just know he'll be here. Uh, but his biggest thing is he, we need help NIL-wise. Um, yeah. You know, he does a yeah. lot of stuff behind the scenes, trying to raise money, <clears throat> trying to be another righty. So, you know, that's what my job was, you know, before I resigned. It was to try to do that, but uh just didn't work out. So I still try to help out where I can, try to raise some notoriety to, to, uh, in, in that aspect. Um, you know, NIL-wise, that's just the name of the game um, today's age. It, it's sad to say, but – it is what it is, and, you know, we're losing guys to the portal. And if we want to be that team in San Antonio, uh, keep on progressing, you know, we got to pay our players at least a little bit of something. So he does a lot. He's always doing stuff. Um, he never has any free time. I feel bad for the guy. Um, he's always grinding. He loves San Antonio. Um, he loves UTSA as well. But we got to help him out somewhere, some way, somehow. And uh, um, I, I tell him every time I try to get an opportunity to talk about NIL and Know how we could raise money and what we could do um that i will because i want to help out and i want to keep him in san antonio would there ever yeah. be a coach harris yeah that's a good question oh uh, yeah my brother coaches out there at uh, justin middle school <laughs> <laughs> his last name is harris <laughs> <laughs> hey, nah, he's hey, the coach at our old middle school coach harris i was just talking to him this morning <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that is awesome that is frank harris thank you so much for being on with yeah, us thanks, today of course i know you're hitting the links uh give an update real fast of the uh masters over in Augusta, Georgia, we have a leader, new leader, an American, Bryson DeChambeau. It's currently three under after four holes right now. Uh, lefty Phil Mickelson is one over, 19th place. Only 26 golfers have oh, beat off. Uh, so the other 63 will get going at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, you're heading over to Olympia Hills. What do you shoot? Again? What do you shoot again? I mean, I mean, uh, and 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 do you play like legit rules, or or are yeah, you? Like, or do you, depends or, on, it depends yeah. on how many are in me. Uh, if we play the like, <laughs> rules and if we're actually betting or not. If we're just, you know, kind of hitting the ball, you know, if it's in a bunker, I might pull out and move it in the back of it. Um, but if we're playing real rules, then I mean, if, if we're betting, then yeah, for sure you got to play. Okay, so I got a two foot, I got a two footer. You gonna let me have it? If we're betting. It out. Yeah. If it's two, if it's right there, okay, I'll give you the gimme. But if we're betting, I'll probably tell you just to put it out just because we're betting. You <laughs> might, you might, you might, you might not make it in there. But if we're just playing, you know, we're keeping our own score, you know, that's a gimme. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like a, you know, if the, I'm one of those guys like, okay, the ball's behind a tree, move the ball. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> we're not professionals. We're not out here to try to make it to the tour. Just move the ball over to the right. It's still the same distance. It's just not behind the tree. No, that's how I am. I'm very lenient, but, you know, I still go by the rules. So that's probably answered your question. One of my tall tales was, uh, oh, God, this is years ago, 10, 15 years ago. I went to Silverhorn, and uh, I walked off the course after about six holes because I yep. hit an animal after every oh, in every man. hole. I hit a deer. I hit a turtle. I hit a rabbit. 
I I hit I, I hit a bird. I mean, I was hitting like that is I, like, funny. I was just killing Dead animals. Eye, dude. <laughs> dude, Silver right. Horn is so narrow though. We yeah. just played that. Me and my buddy just played that last week. So trust me, that place is hard. I know. Man, I I got you a golf club of Texas, baby. Make it happen. We'll make it happen. I've never I've never been there before. I, I actually live not too far from there, but uh, I've never been there. So let's just, let's just set something up for real. Yeah, that, that's my side of town. Hey, Frank, thank you so much for being with yes, us. You're my, you're my new best friend, man, because I didn't let's realize how much in common we have. Let's make it happen. I'll bring the Pro V1s. That is Frank Harris. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> media superstar, future media superstar, because I'm calling it right now. Oh, I'm calling it now. Dude, thanks for being with us today, yes, man. Sir. Thank you for having me. Yes, All right. sir. Take care. Take care. Later. Dude, we have some good guests coming up because tomorrow – we have the Von Eriks. Yeah, we do, man. So we're talking wrestling. We didn't get into wrestling with him. He did mention, Frank Harris did mention that he is into uh, uh, wrestling. And uh, I don't know if it's like current wrestlers, uh, but we have uh, Marshall and Ross Von Erick tomorrow. They're going to be in town performing on the 20th of April. And they're royalty, too. They are. They're Texas royalty. They're the whole family. Yeah. That's Kevin's kids, the right? Von Eriks, bro. Is yeah. that Kevin's kids? Yeah. Who's the actor that played him in in uh, the Iron Claw? Oh, what's his name? What's his name? Zach uh, Zach Efron. Zach Efron. Yeah, that was very good, man. I that was a good movie, man. That was a very good movie. Took my nephew to go see it, and he was looking at me, going, "Dude, don't tell me that another one's gonna die." And I was like, "Yeah, it's a tragedy." It, it, he had no idea. You know, my nephew's twenty one years old. I grew up with Carrie Von Eric and Kevin and. And I all of those too. guys, Mike and all of that. They would always wrestle here in, in Texas, uh, and they were always featured on the late night wrestling that used to happen. Uh, if, if you were a kid back in the 80s, early 90s, you would see this wrestling taking place, you know, late mm -hmm. at night, even during the day. Um, but they would see a lot of these big names come out there when they were first yeah. trying to pave their way in. And you would see them, dude. And you were like, wow, look at them. I'm going to I'm gonna bar, uh, book this. This was our best show ever. He was a great Dude, interview. He was a man. great interview. <laughs> and like I said, who would have uh, thought you all had so much in common, dude? KSAT, Ken's, OAI, KBB. What the hell are you not doing knocking down this guy's door? He's great. I mean, he's like 80% Jimenez. <laughs> <laughs> man, God, man. <laughs> I was like, can you, I can only imagine when you all get together, you're going to have like so much in common. You're going to be like, are we best friends now? <laughs> like that one from Step Brothers. Step Brothers. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? <laughs> you know, there's so much, by the way, what I'm going to need for you to do is slice and dice so many of these into reels. Oh, yeah. Because there's so, I mean, everything from his injury, talking about how he almost lost a leg. Yeah, I'm I off mean, today. The, so the, that's what my, my job that's is. That's that. Uh, to, conversations about you know the cowboys to Dak. <laughs> about Dak prescott i mean he had a strong opinion about Dak prescott to the funny things about fruity drinks yeah to um you know what he likes where he likes to eat the the he doesn't like whataburger yeah i mean you know what that's a controversial stance that's why he belongs in the media but he belongs in new age media because he has an opinion yeah. and wasn't a we didn't have to fish it out of him he yeah. wanted to talk. One of us. One, one of us. us. <laughs> one of us. He's going to be over at Olympia Hills. Frank Harris is a badass. I can't wait to see if you guys get something together so you can go golfing. I'd like to just be the fly on the wall. <laughs> be the fly on the wall. Uh, I'll get a tea time. I'll, yeah. I'll make it happen. You know, uh, I've never golfed in my life, by the way. Never. Dude, as I told him, I have a natural slice, man. I always hit it to the right. I don't even know where I would hit the ball because I've never done it, dude. Yeah. I, and then I angle myself to the left, hoping that it'll just go to the right again and yeah. i'll hit it straight at that point you know i suck at golf dude like 10 cup oh be like that one scene out of 10 cup dude i will have two <laughs> magical holes out of 18 we're all we're all either par or i'll get a bogey and the rest oh, are all snowmen God. and eights sevens and eights the rest of the way hey but there may may be some day drinking going on that's why it's best to do it on a friday yep that's why it's best to do it on a friday that is joe garcia producer extraordinaire tomorrow again we have Marshall and Ross Von Eric. Gonna line up another guest for Monday. Maybe this is the uh, new evolution of the show. Yeah. Thank you to Sean Quintero, and PF Chang, for help setting up this uh, this uh, one on one interview with yeah, thanks Sean with uh, Frank Harris. Uh, did a fantastic job, dude. I love the guy. Love the guy already. <laughs> yeah, he's, dude. He's, he's one great, of us. Man. Who would have thought? He's, he's one of us. Yeah. 
Who would have thought he's like, like I said, 80% Jimenez. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Gonzalez is out like a jackass saying, Joe Garcia, maybe one day Frank Harris can be your co-host. <laughs> oh, my Where God. am I going to be? Am I on vacation or am I fired? <laughs> They're firing you. (laughs) (laughs) On that that note, we'll see you guys tomorrow. This is the Alamo City Sportscast. See you guys tomorrow.